Uh, <clears throat> all right. Our next uh, presenters are uh, Brian, Brian Suddeth and Charles Baker. Um, Brian is a storyteller and aspiring professional writer. He lives in the suburbs with his wife, two teenage sons, picket fence, and a boutique dog. <laughs> Brian, what is, where are you? Wh what's a boutique dog? Uh, it's a soft clothing boutique area. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I understand. Okay, I got you now. I wasn't following you, but thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Charles Baker, 90, is the father of two sons and a daughter and lives in Kettering with his dog, Molly. He was married to his wife, Lois, for almost 70 years until 2014. Charles grew up on a farm in Jefferson Township. When he was still a high school junior, he was drafted to serve in World War II, and he fought in the Pacific as a Marine. This is his story. Brian Suddeth and Charles Baker. <laughs> yeah. It's a real honor to tell the story about my friend Charlie Baker. I'm going to try to hold it together for three minutes. This is an iconic image of the five Marines and the Navy corpsmen that hoisted the flag at Iwo Jima. We all recognize that uh, iconic image. Uh, we thought we knew what it meant, American victory over the Japanese over Tiny Island in the South Pacific. I was knocking on doors uh, three months ago when I come upon this house, and I met Charlie Baker and his dog, Molly. It was a rainy day, early October. Charlie was on his porch listening to the radio at the ball game, and we got the chat. He was wearing a hat that said he was a proud Iwo Jima survivor. His doormat to the front porch said, home of a U.S. Marine. I knew I had to get to know him. I met him, and I said, did you serve in Iwo Jima? And he said, yes, sir, I did. And out of his pocket, out of his wallet, he pulled out this newspaper clipping right here. And he said, I was in the newspaper. And he told me his story about serving in Iwo Jima. And I sat down and listened. He told me about how that was the only battle where Americans suffered more casualties than the enemy who lost the battle. I went back a few weeks ago, and he brought me into his house and opened up his scrapbook and opened up his heart and told me his story about a boy from a farm going to battle. Listen to his stories. Um, it's about fighting the Japanese in what was one of the bloodiest battles in all of World War II. He explained to me the importance of Iwo Jima. Uh, we had the, Pan, uh, the Saipan, the Mariana Islands, and Guam, but we were trying to attack Japan. But we'd get our planes over Iwo Jima, and the Japanese would telephone or uh, telegraph to Japan and give them a two-hour warning. That little piece of island in the middle of the ocean the size of Oakwood was very important to the Japanese keeping us at bay. Charlie was a high school junior when they told him that he'd probably be drafted at the age of 18, so he doubled up on all of his classes his junior year, took his senior class and his junior classes in preparation for the draft. I have a high school junior right now. I can't imagine. Charlie was drafted in March 1944, just shy of finishing his junior year. He finished his junior year, was drafted, and they said, uh, all you young men, we need five of you to be a Marine. Charlie stepped up. He's the only one that stepped up, and they pointed out four other men, said, you four Marines, the rest of your army. This is his graduation photo. He was a half credit short of graduating, trying to double up his junior year. But at graduation in the summer of 1945, while he was in the South Pacific, as this young Marine, the high school awarded his diploma to his father in his absence. Charlie, as a joke, his dad is the only guy with an eighth grade education to ever get a diploma from Jefferson High School. <laughs> That's Charlie's joke, not mine. <clears throat> This is what a fellow Marine who landed on uh, Iwo Jima had to say about Charlie. He says, uh, I landed on the beach on February 19, 1945, as an 18 year old with a 31st Place Battalion, 5th Marine Division. I served as a rifleman on the island for 35 days of the campaign. The bravest man that I ever saw during that period was Charlie Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce to you Corporal Charlie Baker, recipient of the Navy Presidential Citation. And World War II Victory Medal, United States Marine, Charlie Baker. One quick cor a correction, Charlie will not be 90 years old until March. He's only 89. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> don't want to get me older than I really am. Charlie, <laughs> this photo is famous, those five Marines and the Navy corpsmen, the top of Mount Suribachi, the highest peak of Iwo Jima. Where were you when that photo was taken in 1945? I was about 50 yards from them. Uh, e Company raised the flag. E Company raised the flag, and F Company, I, w I was in F Company of the 5th Marine Division. And you, see, uh, you see that striking young man on the left, fourth on the left, his hand on the knee, that's Charlie, 70 years ago. There. The one that's a fellow there holding the rifle up in the air <laughs> on the right side. <clears throat> F Company of the, of the 5th Marine Division lost 237 in the 256 men laying on that beach. Charlie's one of those 20 survivors. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the, the total was uh, uh, that he, he related to, so you don't understand, they weren't all killed. They were f wounded or killed. It's the only battle America ever had that we had more casualties than the enemy. The Japanese only had 18,000 troops on the island. That's all the casualties they could have. We took less than 1,000 prisoners. Charlie, your friend uh, painted this painting of the tank with the um, flamethrower on the front. Can you tell us about the guy at the back of the tank right there? The tank was up on a cliff, as you can see here. It was up about uh, five, five, six feet high. And it came up, and it was shooting uh, napon out over, over the top of us, and they were shooting at the enemy, and some of their uh, 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 places where they were hiding, and uh, uh, the, we were down below it, and they was going right, the napon is a jelly-like substance, and when it hits uh, 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 rocks or that, it just sticks on it. And uh, the napon was going over our heads, and I told the guys, I said, somebody's gotta get back there and tell the guy back off, or he's gonna hit some of us and uh, nobody wanted to move, so I jumped out of the foxhole and went up that cliff and got on the back, and there's a telephone on the outside of a tank, and I told the fellow to back off so he didn't hit any of us, and uh, uh, I was able to do that, and thank goodness nobody got hurt. The Marines took Mount Suribachi in three days, but it took another 32 days to clear the island of 18,000 Japanese. At the end of that 35-day campaign, Charlie was on a ship to head back to San Diego, or back to Hawaii, to regroup. And he wrote this letter home, and I'm going to have him read a portion of that letter that his sister saved from 1945. The, um, I wrote this letter on the ship coming back, and uh, part of it is this. Five weeks in a foxhole, boy, was I dirty and tired. Thirty-five days without a bath, still plenty tired but safe and sound and not a scratch. Dad, you, you can't imagine the things we went through. It's too bad there has to be wars, but I guess it's God's way of making us realize the truth in life. I sure was worn out, but safe and sound, and I have God to thank for this. Yes, no one could go through that hell and come out safe without, safely without God's help. I have God to thank for everything, and I will always. <laughs> and, I, and just at the end of it, I had your son and brother, my sister was at home too, your son and brother, Charles. Charlie went back to Hawaii after that letter, regrouped, and they, they steamed forward to Japan to attack the mainland. They, were, they arrived to Japan two weeks after the bomb, and he served six months of occupation on island Japan before he left the Marines in 1946. Ladies and gentlemen, Corporal Charlie Baker.